Hello everyone, I'm Ahmed Khan and I'll be hosting today's episode of Baatcheet. And today we have with us Ms. Thanista Sudhakardi from 2014 to 2018 batch of biotechnology branch. And currently she is pursuing her master's in molecular medicine from Uppsala University in Sweden. And she backed an internship at University of Texas MD Anderson Cancer Center in 2017. And she was also a research trainee at Center for Human Genetics. So without any further ado, let's welcome her. Thank you, Ahmed. Thank you, Ahmed. It's great to be here. And yeah, thank Bhatsheet and Bhav and RT to have me here. Okay. So should we start with our first question? Yeah. So you are right now in, uh, you uh, backed an internship at MD Anderson Cancer Research Center. Can you entail us on how you did that? And how many professors did you have to contact? Um. So the MD Anderson uh, internship I got when I was in my third year of my bachelor's. So I pretty much started emailing professors around, I think, by February, March uh, or so. So that's how early I started. And luckily with MD Anderson as a professor, I contacted. So I was uh, very keen on uh, working with cancer genetics very early on. And I knew that cancer was something that I was interested in. So that was something that I was looking at. So that made me easier to kind of shortlist uh, universities or university hospitals that are more dealing with cancer-related research. And I think you can find a lot of these rankings or if you want to go by those, if you don't know, you're not aware of many universities, you can just use QS and uh, uh, facilities like that, which, you know, give you the university rankings to kind of figure out which, what university tanks, what and what subjects. So I started with that and then I found certain universities and started emailing people, which I thought was going, you know, I was interested in. Uh, and then I had, uh, I had, I think, contacted about 15 people or so. Oh. Uh, but uh, MD Anderson, I think I did get it immediate, almost immediately. Like I think a week nice. after I, uh, email them. I was. I actually had emailed to the head of the department I had worked in in systems biology, and um, he sent it to another professor who was working with the, within the department. So to my PI there now, and uh, I had a phone interview, and it all quickly worked out. So it was a pretty easy process uh, for me to get to the interview stage because, and I think it's just all in the, your cover letter, how good you are at explaining, like, you know, that I just showed the interest that I had in the work they had and just showed why I'm actually even interested in the subject like that. And in the phone interview, I had a couple of questions related to what I actually know, what are my laboratory skills and why I want to pursue such an interview. I mean, such a profile and things like that. So how many other professor replied to you? Uh, you sent it to 15 email. Mm, I mean, I did get a lot of replies back. Oh. Uh, so I, I, I think I would say three fourths of the people did reply back to me. Some of them, I uh, were, we continued the discussion to another round, but some of them were at least replied back to me saying that the laboratories were full and they could not have another position mm -hmm. or they don't have a position open. So. Uh, I did get positive and negative replies back. So would you say a good email is important for a good uh, application? Like uh, what was your email like uh, to make it stand um, out to, to professors? I think, yeah, at, at this stage, they would be record, getting a lot of emails from many yeah, people. Yeah. So I think it is important that you actually understand or, I mean, I'm sure none of us truly understand, or especially in the second and third year stage, we yeah. don't know every extent of all the work that's going in. But at least, I mean, you, you can have some enthusiasm towards something that there might be some topics that really interest you and resonate with you. And uh, when that happens, you automatically would start writing something or, you know, you automatically will try to connect with those people in telling how important their work is to you and how much you would like to learn from it. So I think that part is really important. And then you would uh, again, try to um, match what skills you already have acquired from the laboratories we have had in our 
uh, course and everything to match to what kind of work they are doing and you know saying that you know i have i know at least the basics of this and i can improve on it with your guidance yeah. and things like that so show what uh, you have already done and try to relate it with their experience and what work they are doing and yes once you find an actual lab which really does uh the work that you kind of think you're interested in because at that stage i don't think any one of us would know the exact thing that i mean at no stage it's actually easy because there's a lot of uh, aspects to everything so i guess you just formulate it such that uh, you have one place where you talk about the research actually look into the research papers delve deep into what they're doing and understand that and email uh, write that in your email and then have one part where you you kind of have your experience won't change drastically with each professor so unless you have to write something you want to make stand out specifically that you know they need it and you have it then you write that part like you know in bold or in like show it to them more clearly otherwise it's a pretty standard email where the first part is where you start explaining and try to understand their work and tell why you are actually interested okay was your uh, was your cover letter in the same email or was it was it as an uh, attachment did you send it as an attachment uh so in my email i had, I had my cover letter and then uh, my resume was in okay. an attachment so my email try to keep it short and especially when you're in your second year third year it's not like you have i mean a lot of it experience. is great if you have a lot of skills but don't drag out the email cuz if you don't have anything to say it doesn't make sense to drag out an email yeah yeah of course so have a clear cut four paragraphs sh- four short four paragraphs, paragraphs different sections saying uh what you like why you should be there and then what you finally want or something and a conclusion okay 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 and you were also a project trainee at center for human genetics what did that entail uh so that i started af- that, after that that one is uh, funded by oxford right I saw it. Center for Human Genetics. Yeah. Uh, that was actually it's a depart. It is a government of Karnataka backed oh. research laboratory. Okay. So I did it in Bangalore. So uh, in in India. So that's a, a department of that belonged to the uh, government of Karnataka funded okay. plus probably a national funding as well. Okay. uh and that i i was a project trainee uh i took a gap year after i finished my uh, undergrad after i graduated okay. so i worked there for about 7 months uh yeah. i mean i actually got the position like let's say in august or september i i had a, an interview process so i was applying to a lot of laboratories in india because i had an experience of what research was like in the us so i really wanted to understand what it was actually like in the indian uh by with an indian background so applied to vacancies and job vacancies and contacted people and again just looked at i was sure about certain locations that i wanted to look at in india so then i started looking at the research facilities only in them, those places and since cancer was something that i was already keen at it was easier to shortlist certain labs and not look at every possible laboratory and uh, so i was working on cancer sensitization and uh, some therapeutic advances in different can- cell lines of cancer and different i was working on like three or four three different projects over there while i was there but yeah did you decide the project or was it your project supervisor um so i had applied basically to one of the projects and it kind of extended to the work and i was also taking over some work from another uh, lab member who was taking on on a leave who was going out for a leave so it was a short position for like 6 to 7 months so uh i did not have a major steering of what the project was because also it was a short project and you don't you and i was picking up someone else's work that was already being done so yeah but uh, it was a nice experience in the sense that once you do these things you get to be in three or four different projects like i said and understand what other people are doing so i guess all these add on to my experience for my uh, masters which you know even though i had my internship in the us this was much more an added experience after undergrad where i had more knowledge on the subject so i saw on your linkedin resume you had a lot of uh, courses on medication 
when did you know you were interested in medication and in, in fact when did you know you were interested in biotechnology biotechnology was very early on i think right. uh, from my i mean it was always medicine actually oh. uh, to start off with and then i think in our ninth grade or something of that sort is ninth when grade. we were uh so, now, that's when you had the first genetic scores in your school i suppose yeah, yeah, yeah. so that's when i realized that probably medicine is not what i want to do and may i want to get into the research of it and so genetics was something that was i was keen at in the beginning and yeah that soon just transitioned very naturally and organically to me and uh, and cancer was i guess i just started reading up on lot of articles or uh, through the I mean from the second year itself or third year i've always applied to just cancer labs and worked related to cancer so that was something that's always been constant and uh, as i went i just started uh, trying to understand there are various aspects so every position i chose had a different approach to uh, dealing with cancer even if it's a different kind of tumor so uh that part was so you kind of keep building and trying to add different things so you just don't say let's say cancer immunology is something that i learned recently which i didn't have an experience to in before and then cancer with some kind of a drug and sensitization was something i had uh so you keep adding the various aspects to it that you can just add on so right now you are in sweden yes okay so how was that journey like you can tell us can you tell us um so uh that journey was uh, it progressed immediately after my pro- project, uh, project trainee at being a project trainee at CHG and i had applied started applying for a lot of masters uh, application and again i went about i think i searched the top universities uh, that were good in for masters and post uh, in post grad education and kind of made like an excel file with all the universities with their deadline dates the application requirements and what is the course that i was actually interested in so i i think i looked at about 30 different universities and uh, okay. looked at the courses that all of them offered and finally i think i ended up applying to 12 13 universities i'm not too sure if i remember the number correctly but yeah, around 10 12 universities and luckily i did get almost like eight or nine uh replies as positive uh, re- reply when i got into most That's of the courses that i had applied to so again i think you just relate to it and uh, upsala university i chose because i actually had come across it only through the uh, erasmus uh, mundus the im im program that we have the innovative yeah, yeah. medicine yeah yeah so that was the only program of erasmus that i could relate to and that was in, had courses related to mine and that's where i found upsala university but i ended up applying to another course itself i didn't get through to the imm program so i am currently doing a molecular medicine course so and this is completely based off on human uh, diagnostics prognostics and uh, research and it covers various different aspects of it and it's a very research focused course so it's just a step by step thing yeah uh, you mentioned erasmus program can you tell us more about it uh, so erasmus is the program which uh, has uh, an international tie up with the uh, many european universities and indian student indian universities as an exchange program and uh, so they offer internships and traineeships and masters uh, a degree and even phd I, th- i think fellowships to some extent so i think that's something that everyone should apply to when they are looking for opportunities and at least if not they will at least get to contact a lot of labs through this and uh, get an insight to it but i guess one of the major requirements where i felt short on possibly is could be the grading uh, so yeah. sometimes you're expected to have or like in be a topper or like have very high grades which was not always the condition with mine so uh, but still you get i think an experience is also something that is supported and that they look into so i think it's worth a try even if you don't have the grades to go for it because there is no harm in trying 
but and yeah it does not have any fee payment or like an application fee so go for it and they have offers programs with neurasmus and imim and different aspects so they some some programs concentrate on the medicine on food on plant or whatever it is you could be interested in and how's life like at upsala university i heard it is it was the first university in sweden how is it different from an it varangal i don't think there's uh, a I fair comparison okay. point in I, I just, uh but yeah it has been the oldest universities and the research that has been doing is all uh, cutting edge and i mean the research we wouldn't say that that much going on in it biotechnology of course, at yeah. this point now but um, so it's completely different in the sense that it's much more of a nurturing setup and of course there's always an undergrad versus postgraduate difference where over here it's much more of research focus where yeah. they uh, focus on your holistic development so it's not just me trying to learn some subject and you know understand that and just put it up put it right it, the whole thing down onto an exam sheet and pass my question so i have we have a lot of assignments we are we have like we need to f- come up with our own research proposal and a True. problem statement where we are you know we are taught to kind of uh, plan our own experiments let's say this is your proposal how would you plan experiments to uh, go you are given so a lot of freedom of like, yeah and it's like kind of nurturing the research side of it and help you actually set you up for a phd or set you up for a research background so it's kind of a great bridge between your undergrad where you have just a lot of basic knowledge but you don't know how to apply it and so it, they teach you how to do it sort of okay. in a way in a good way and what are your future plans uh, phd uh phd is in the books so i might uh, also look for research assistance job opportunities before i can actually find a lab that i'm probably like actually interested in to get start a phd but yes phd or yeah i guess that's it for now not not to uh, strict or I don't have everything figured out yet okay no problem uh, and one more thing uh, what was your, what, what extracurricular activities did you participate in college uh, would you say they were important for your application your resume uh, extracurriculars i was uh, part of qcm uh, quality control management in springsbury and that was something i was doing from my second year i think first year i was a volunteer or something and second third fourth then went on to become a core in the final year uh so that was something i was there and then you have the literary debating club and there's so many of these clubs i think if they they're always looking at uh communication skills are something that are extremely important and being a team player is something important when you're coming to a research lab and it's nice they always want to know that the who they appoint understands the value of being uh our handling people from different cultures different mm-hmm. languages and you know work with them and you know so any of these things in college when you're there in a different club you work with a lot of people you learn to communicate with them and as you go up like you know from second to fourth year you go up you start building like leadership skills and trying to handle or give allocate work and all these things are uh things that you know will help you in the future at some point or other because they are skills that will you require not just in a research lab even if you're working in a company based setup you would need all these things at some point so i think it is nice to have you know uh well, spread and look at different yeah. things of this you I mean do something you're interested in you don't have to force yourself into doing everything or like you know trying to be in different places but just one other spread thing is out. also yeah you don't have to do be in five things you can just be in one thing but that will still help you okay and anything else you would like to say to our viewers um i would just like to say this take it as it comes and you know you it will you something would work out at the end of it and i think there's always an option for you like be if you don't have good grades there's still an always an option of you to gain experience in one way or the other and you can still be get, get into one of the top universities with not a great 
great in your undergrad. Okay. So all of that happens and have good rapport with your project coordinators and everything. So, you know, and actually put in the work in it so you can see, they can see that you're actually working towards it. You can get good recommendation letters from them if all that works out. And always look for opportunities where anytime you get, try to find an internship or somewhere that you can work with. But if you don't get it, then use it to do some other extracurricular activity or yeah. anything else you're interested in, or just do online courses. And one more thing, if you don't mind me asking, uh, what was your CG like? CGPA. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, you just froze up. Could you repeat yeah, your question? Oh, uh, if you don't mind me asking, what was your CGPA like? Ah, uh, my CGPA was seven point something, seven point three something like that. And uh, yeah, it my first year and second year was very bad. I think it was it was just on the border of seven or anything. And and third year and final year, I kind of started getting a nine-ish CGPA because I actually oh, like the nice. subjects then. And then, but then that doesn't matter because your first and second were yeah. really bad. So it doesn't ever, you never make up for it. But yeah, I got a 7.38. I'm not sure. So do, do the professor ever ask you about low CGPA uh, or average? No one, has, no one has actually ever asked me. All they worry about is just what kind of a lab skills you have. Yeah, yeah. And laboratories are something that I have always liked, even in Warangal be it whatever it is, always the first in line to try and finish something or get something done. But uh, whatever it is, so those, if they want to look at something also, they might look specifically at the lab grades and things like that. So, but no one has ever like asked me, but the only problem comes when you are applying to fellowships and uh, things like that, where they are really looking for the top rank yeah. students and things like that. So, that those situations might be a hindrance, but other than that, when you're actually personally approaching to people and you show that you have a zeal to learn and experience that can match to it, it's they're always welcome to any person. You don't have to have a nine ten CGP. You know? That's nice to know. Yes. <laughs> okay, <laughs> let's wrap it up for today. And yeah. do share, subscribe, and what's please can you comment? And yes. <laughs> yes thank you all for watching and i think it's a great uh, initiative that you guys have taken so good luck thank you